Okay, so I would like first to thank the organizers for the invitation. And I would like also to thank you for being here. It's very late. And since you are so good, maybe I'm going to give you a treat at the end of my talk. So, but if you are good. So, um, the plan of my talk is going to be the following. So first, I'm going to recall stuff about geodesic currents. And um, I've been very lucky because it's uh, bright uh, young people like Videka and uh, Tengren gave a very good introduction already to geodesic currents. And uh, then I'm going to, to explain what is the Liouville current of a Hitchin representation. And then I'm going to mix that with the uh, complex structures. And I'm going to end up with questions. Because all this is essentially a work in progress with uh, Andres Sambarino. And um, uh, there seems to be m m m more to be done, but so far we have not uh, uh, done uh, much. Okay, so geodesic currents. So as usual, I'm going to consider a surface S, which is going to be closed, uh, connected. G is greater than two. And mine will be also oriented. And I will denote by a, a by one of S, a fundamental group of S. And you know that uh, associated to, the, to this uh, group, you have a circle, which is a boundary at infinity of, uh, of this group. And this is uh, homeomorphic to S1. And we consider the space of uh, geodesics. So which is just uh, the space of pair of distinct points in, in, in the boundary at infinity. So it's a the Cartesian square of that minus the diagonal. It's a, just a pair of space of uh, pairs of distinct point. in S1. So why is it called the space of geodesics? Just that because if you take a, so if a, if a G has uh, non, uh, has negative curvature, non-positive curvature on S, then this boundary at infinity of S identified with the boundary, visual boundary at infinity of the universal cover on two points correspond to a geodesic. So what is now a geodesic current? So definition, a geodesic current is a locally finite measure, a pi one of s invariant locally finite measure on G. So examples. So one example is uh, well known. So you take now a uh, letter gamma be an element in the pi one of S. So it has two fixed points in 
point of gamma in the boundary at infinity. And you consider the following geodesic current. Is uh, denoted by delta gamma, so which is a sum. So the idea is that you want to take the Dirac measure supported, so the Dirac measure supported on on uh, these pairs, gamma plus by minus one. But of course, you want this to be invariant by the group. So you take the sum for element of pi one of s divided by the group generated by gamma of that. So that's the first example. The first example, the second example is the uh, UV measure for hyperbolic metrics. So, this is a well-known example, but I'm going to give a, the construction for, as a warm-up for, for the next construction. So, uh, second example, you will measure for a hyperbolic metric. So this means that in this situation, you have pi one of s is realized as a subgroup of PSL2R. Okay. And you can also uh, realize, uh, you, you can also consider PSL2R itself, so which is identified with a unit tangent bundle of the hyperbolic plane. And you have the action of the geodesic flow, which Correspond to describing, describing that as a as a R bundle, and the quotient is uh, well what it is P L two R divided by R, and this is identified with G, my space of geodesics, and this carries a uh, this carries a one form, so you have a one form theta on Two, which is a Liouville form. So this form is given by theta of u, which is the uh, killing product of u with x. That's a generator of the R action. And the, uh, it turned out that the this is actually the con connection of a line bundle. And uh, d theta is the pullback of a certain form, which is, of course, the curvature form of this line bundle. And this is going to be the Liouville measure, the Liouville current. And of course, what is pi? Pi is this projection. Liouville current of the hyperbolic metric. So there are quite many things you can do with, uh, with currents. And um, yes, this is what I wanted to say. So one other thing you can do is to consider the Bonao intersection. That's a beautiful construction. So if you have two currents, you consider the following quantity. So that's the integral of a G cross G divided by gamma of a certain quantity. And this is uh, just the integral of a um, new um, tensor You have, a, you, have a measure, you have a measure on that. You have a measure on that. It turns out that this quantity is finite. And in some cases, we can actually compute it. 
geometrically uh, the intersection of delta gamma delta eta is just e e equal to the cardinal of uh, the intersection of gamma and eta in the surface S. So this, gener this uh, object is indeed the geometric intersection for current supported on geodesics, and it extends continuously to, um, to all currents. So the other thing you can do is you can, you have actually a pairing with something which may call parametrization form. So, so what is this pairing? So remember you have a, this line bundle over G. So I describe it in this context of a hyperbolic metric, but it turns out that this line bundle is well defined topologically. And um, you have an action of gamma here. So you have an action of gamma here, which leads to an action of gamma here, so that L divided by gamma is compact. Now you may consider on this object the form so on L so let's define so let omega 1 of L is a space of one forms on L along the orbit of the R action. So, or the R orbit. So what does it mean that locally this object which looks like F of X, Y, T so this X and Y correspond to the part in G. So somehow you can think of this as a family of measures on the line depending on the base point. So, so you have a natural pairing between a current, so that's a current, and that's a, an element of omega 1 of L. And this object is just the integral of of L of gamma of this same uh, uh, measure tensor. So you have a, a measure along the line, a measure along the transverse. So this defines a measure on L. And you take, so this now is a measure. And you integrate this measure on this compact set. Uh, well, I uh, should I say, of course, invariant on the gamma. On the pi 1 of s, which is the same thing as gamma. OK. So where am I? Here. Now, Hitchin representations. So uh, can Grant explain very nicely how it works. So you have the irreducible representation of PSL to R into PSL and R. So that's the irreducible representation. And now imagine that you take a, a hyperbolic structure. So you have here a discrete Faceful representation, and you can compose these two representations. So these representations 
our representation in PSLNR, whose the ISK closure will actually end up into some PSL2R. And then by definition, we call those functional representations. So then what is a Hitchin representation? So a Hitchin representation representation is a representation rho of pi 1 of s into PSLDR. Yeah, I try to keep the fact that the dimension is d, not n, which can be deformed to a function representation. And here, deforming means that you deform generator by generator. So then the standard notation is to say that let H of n be the space of Hitchin representation And of course, I would like this to be equivalent up to conjugacy. So the story started by a beautiful theorem by Hitchin, which identified H of n with R to the dimension chi minus chi minus Euler characteristic, Euler, Euler characteristic of S times the dimension of SLDR. So he asked the question, what is the meaning of this Hitchin uh, component? And of course, you notice that H2 is the same thing as Teichmuller space. And then later on, Choi and Goldman interpreted what is H3. So it turned out that these days we know a lot about these Hitchin representations as a Hitchin component. And we have an interesting description of them as dynamical objects. So they share many features of Teichmuller space in the sense, for instance, that associated to such a representation, there is a geodesic flow, exactly like hyperbolic structure. But there is something that we know very little about is are they related in any ways to, to complex geometry? So, so we have a nice kind of Thurstonian Sullivan picture, but we don't have the analogous of, uh, of uh, that. So let's make a beautiful drawing. So that's a hitching component. And that's a, inside the Hitchin component, we have this uh, object, which is a function locus. So this corresponds to function representation. And this is, of course, identified with the Teichmuller space. So what I'm going to describe is a way to project that, this uh, quotient, in a, a mapping class group invariant way. So for that, I need. Uh, I will need to. I want to introduce this uh, Liouville, a Liouville current for the Hitchin representation. So let's state a theorem. So if rho is Hitchin, there exists map psi and psi star that goes from the boundary at infinity of pi 1 of s to respectively 
the projective space and the dual projective space. And this satisfies some nice property. For instance, they are continuous. And so you have this uh, transverse property that is if x is different from y, then xi of x plus xi of y is equal to rd. And the other property which I will need is that uh, the image of xi on the image of xi star are C1 manifold. Thank you, thank you. So, um, so the images of this uh, curve are C1 manifolds. So it gives a C1 structure on the boundary at infinity, but unless you are in the function case, the C1 structure actually are different. So in other words, you have a map, psi, psi star, from my space G, my space of geodesics, into an object O, which is a subset of RPD cos RPD star. And this is a set of those uh, line and colines. A line on the upper planes, I'm sorry. So that L plus P is equal to RD. So there is a fact. that O is a symplectic manifold. Of course, in an SLD invariant way. And uh, for those you know about symplectic reduction, it is actually the symplectic reduction of the action of R on RD cos RD star. So if you want to describe explicitly what is a symplectic structure, you consider the space, the, line, the space L, which is a space of u alpha such that alpha of u is equal to 1. So that's a subset of Rd cross Rd star. Oh, I'm so, so sorry, so sorry. So they are a rho on rho star equivalent. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, it's very late. So this is a symplectic manifold. So you have this line, this object, and actually this naturally project, of course, by an R action of over um, O. And you have a, then a, actually a one form theta on L is given by theta of at the point u alpha of uh, v beta, which is uh, alpha against u minus beta against v. So that's a one form on this line bundle. And you can, you see that d theta actually is going to be the pi star, the pre-image of a certain form, symplectic form, Symplectic form. So that's very similar to that. And now the theorem tells you a little more than, than the fact that this map is actually um, a C1. So this map is C1. And of course, gamma equivalent. But this map is actually a, the image of that is actually a symplectic submanifold. So the image of I, I, wait a minute, I'm sorry, is a symplectic submanifold.
What? Uh, merci. We're not being good. <laughs> no, I'm really sorry. Thank you for this important interruptions. So the image of that is a symplectic manifold, so you can produce something which we want to define as a Liouville current. Current of rho. So what is it? So let's do it by lambda rho. This is just a pullback by psi psi star of the symplectic form omega, which you have here. So this Liouville current, so why, so, um, so we are kind of pretty sure that's a very bad terminology and it's going to uh, fall back on us as all the previous terminology we have chosen before. So why do you want to call that the Liouville current and why does it play, play a special role? So here is a little proposition, uh, let's say a theorem, okay. So, I'm going to explain the theorem. So, lambda rho is a, the 1D intersection current. And lambda rho is the 1, 2 Gibbs current. So, I should say rather is proportional to that. So what does this uh, first sentence mean? It means that the intersection of rho, of lambda rho, with a delta gamma, stuff that corresponds to a closed curve, this is exactly equal to the log of lambda 1 over lambda d of rho of gamma, So meaning that rho of gamma is a matrix which is diagonalizable, and I take the largest eigenvalue and divide it by the smallest eigenvalue. I take the log of that, and that's exactly the intersection of that. So that's the definition of being the 1D intersection current. So what's, uh, what does it mean to be the 1, 2 Gibbs current? Mean that nu is actually proportional so the limit when n, when l goes to infinity, so in short words, it means that you want to consider closed geodesic and you measure them with this, their, their one, two length, and they become, equi there is an equal repartition theorem, and this arrives to the Gibbs current, so uh, one over the cardinal of something which I'm going to call N of L, sum over N of L of sum over gamma in N of L. And I take then the log of lambda 1 over lambda 2 of rho of gamma uh, times delta gamma. And I'm totally forgetting something. That's not the definition. You have to divide by. Ah. And then, uh, still not good. No, no, I'm sorry. Um, there's no log here. So what is N of L? Is a set of gamma such that the log 
of um, lambda 1 over lambda 2 of rho of gamma is less than n. Is correct this time? Is it being recorded? Lambda, where is? That's a UV current. Yeah. Very hard when your collaborator fell asleep during talk. <laughs> okay. So the fact that this uh, UV current has a two nature is going to be helpful in the... Uh, um, alpha is a, is a coefficient. The number, which is, uh, well, which is an, an invariant of the representation by itself. Which may, you may want to call the volume of the representation, but it's clearly going to blow up at some point, so we don't want to give it a name. So, so now let's let mix in, uh, so that's the definition of the UV current. And that is a kind of very weird property that it is uh, constructed with different roots. So now let's uh, let mix in, uh, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. With a complex structure. So let's assume now that let J be a complex structure on S. So then you can associate to this, uh, uh, it follows that then the boundary at infinity of pi 1 of gamma then becomes identified with the boundary at infinity of H2. And here, let's say I take the hyperbolic, the Poincaré half plane model. Of course now, two distinct points in the boundary of uh, H2, this corresponds to geodesic, but you can associate also to two points, a nice object, which is an abelian differential, so, so let x, y belonging to G, then you can associate to x, y, an abelian differential, which I'm going to call theta of x, y, which is uh, dz, dz, times 1 minus x minus z minus 1 minus y, y minus z. So this is an abelian differential, abelian. On, on the H2, and which is characterized up to constant by the fact it's a unique which is invariant Variant under the diagonal group, the stabilizer in PSL2R of my, pa of my pair of points. So now you have a, something which depends on two points. So, of course, what you want to do is to average that with the current. So, let's define definition. So, the eighth. Fourier coefficient of a current mu with respect to G is equal to the integral over G of theta xy to the power k uh, d mu of x, y. And let's call that u hat k of j. So that's a very natural object to consider. And actually, it has been considered before. So if you take 
nu is equal to delta gamma, so if nu is equal to delta gamma, then you exactly obtain the so-called um, uh, relative Poincaré series of the geodesic gamma. And we have the little proposition now that uh, first u k j is well defined if k is greater than 2 and doubt it's defined for when you averaged a billion differentials and second property is what is it? Oh, mu k j is actually k is actually gamma invariant is pi 1 of s invariant and it's actually a holomorphic differential of degree k with respect to the corresponding symplectic structure, to the corresponding complex structures. So another property is that if you take, so all this depends on normalization, so uh, forget about, I mean, there all should be constants which are factorial of n or stuff or you don't know what. UK J against a holomorphic differential. So if you take the Vell Peterson product, this is the same thing as what is called the period of, of um, you could call that the period of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Q. So this is something that I want to call Q at on the unit tangent bundle of S. Uh, I'm sorry, actually I, I introduced a definition for that. At the sparing of some object which I called, so there is a current against uh, this one form which I call Q at, Q chetch, and Q chetch um, is equal to Q of X, 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 DT. And this is a generator of the geodesic flow. And so as a why do I call them uh, Fourier coefficients that you can actually interpret them indeed as Fourier coefficient. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I wanted to give you your treat, but uh, so now, now what's a, the, that, that's a, that's a holomorphic differential of certain degree, let's say degree K. Okay, and this object is, so in other words, you take the integral over US of a function, which is the real part of uh, Q of XX. So the X is the point of US, uh, there is no real part, I'm sorry. And then you, uh, you take DT, so you take, the, the, you take the, the form along the geodetic flow, and you take the tensor with the, uh, tensor with the current that you have, right? So for instance, if you take the Liouville current itself of the, of the hyperbolic metric, all these four coefficients are zero. Okay, so maybe I should write that as a remark that if nu, mu is equal to nu j, the, cur the UV current of that, then all these Fourier coefficients are actually zero. So what's the theorem of uh, the theorem that we like with Andres? Just wanted to check if I've done my homework so far. Right. So a theorem. Say that given a teaching representation Rho, there exists a unique complex structure
up to diffeomorphism, of course, on S, such that uh, J on S, such that the quadratic Fourier coefficient So turn out the proof of that is a uh, is relatively easy once you know enough uh, enough math. So what is the idea? So what is the idea? So, so we consider the function, so let i rho be the function which is defined on Teichmuller space, 2r, actually 2r plus, uh, which is defined by to a complex structure j, I associate the intersection of the Liouville current of rho with the uh, Liouville current of the complex structure. So now you prove the following thing. So you first prove that I rho is proper. And that's, uh, I mean, it's not very difficult, but it's even easier when you use a, a Engren color lemma. But it's, uh, it's not as deep as that. Then you prove that I rho is convex along earthquakes. So actually, I should make here that the fact that you prove that I rho is proper using the fact that you have this interpretation as a uh, intersection current. And here, you prove that this is convex along earthquake, so that's a follow from uh, Steve works. And here you use the fact that IRO I is an average of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a current supported on geodesic. So now you know that, uh, so you already know that you have a minimum because this is, this is convex. So then you use uh, the earthquake theorem. So it tells you that given two points, there is a unique earthquake flow and unique uh, earth earthquake. And you want to know, uh, you want to show that there is a unique minimum. So you know that your function is convex on that. So it has a minimum, but this minimum could be not unique. So here, uh, to guarantee uniqueness, Well, that's a word that Trump used. I can spell it, I hope. To guarantee uniqueness. Mm -hmm. uh, so you use the analysis of I rho. And for instance, this is done by Wedgeman, Canary, Marino. So the conclusion of all this uh, piling up of theorem is that uh, I rho has a unique minimum. And then you finally use uh, this, uh, this formula here. So, so, uh, so then you realize that the minimum, so you, you have this formula, uh, this uh, so d i rho of a quadratic differential. So you know that the tangent space of the space identify with, with quadratic differential. And you see that the variation of i rho in the direction of q square, that, that, uh, q, q2, I'm sorry, of a quadratic differential, this is exactly by, the, by this formula here that against the uh, 
quadratic differential here. So, uh, so you see that's uh, something that's not very hard to obtain. But that's still a nice uh, result. So we have defined this way a map. So now let's go to the questions. Questions. So we have defined a sort of a projection from the um, Hitchin component to Teichmuller space. So this is indeed a projection in the sense that if you start from a point in the function locus, you end up in the function locus itself. But apart from that, we do nothing. For instance, is pi a submersion? So we don't even know this object is a, is a, is a, a submersion. And what about the fibers? So um, we hope that the fibers are the fibers contractible. And if it were true, uh, that would uh, imply that uh, um, Hitchin component dividing by the mapping class group is actually a nice, topologically at least, a nice vibration of a Riemann moduli space. And so now we are very greedy. So we have uh, other questions. So we have just so far used only the, the, the quadratic, I mean the second Fourier coefficient, but of course we hope that the other one makes sense. And we have this nice map, psi, so it depends on the complex structure, that goes from to, from the Hitchin component to the sum for k equal to to d h of d, I'm sorry, of the holomorphic differential of degree key, d. So these two space have the same dimension. So by the inverse invariance of the domain, this should definitely be a homomorphism. So is psi a homeomorphism. So that sounds very greedy. And uh, again, if this is true, then that would imply a nice result. That would imply, again, a description of the Hitchin uh, component as a vibration over Teichmuller space. So that's a yes. So that's it. So I could uh, I could have I could say more, but I promised a treat. <laughs>